All right, hey, so I didn't find any good Skyforge videos out there that properly cover the basic mechanics of the game or introduce the game in a way that, you know, people who don't know the game very well, how they can actually properly understand the game or people who have looked into the game but can't really find um, good comprehensive information about it because there's a lot of videos out there that cover bits and pieces about the game, but there's no actual good comprehensive view um, about the game, specifically the closed beta. So what I want to do in this video is actually cover some of the uh, basic core concepts of Skyforge. So people who are either don't know about Skyforge, learn, learn a little bit more about it, or if um, there are people out there who actually want to try out Skyforge but are a bit hesitant on uh, buying the Founders Pack to see if it's even worth buying the Founders Pack to get into the betas. Or if they're interested in uh, playing the game maybe at launch. Because this game will be free to play. Um, you don't have to buy the game to play it. And there you don't have to pay a subscription fee. There is a, like a um, sub-fee that you can do that will cover maybe some of the more... Um, uh, other features in this game that have not been revealed yet. So nobody really knows what the, like what you'll get from subscribing to the game. Um, so right now, I'll just cover the stuff that's, I guess, free right now um, without paying the sub fees. So um, starting off with the, uh, the core basics, you know, moving around is your usual WASD to move around. Um, to rotate the camera you just essentially move the mouse, right? So it behaves more like a um, FPS game, where you just move the mouse and then your camera moves. If you look in the middle of the screen, like right above my head right there, you'll see some crosshairs, which again is like, like an FPS game. So you use those crosshairs to actually target um, any kind of object. So like I'm targeting this person right here, or, you know, just scroll around, you can target and things, but, um, when you're out in the world, which I'll show later, you can also you can you can use this to target enemies, like just you know mousing over them, or you can use tab targeting. So um, tab targeting and having this is more of a live action kind of game concept, which I really really do enjoy. Um, in terms of movement, uh, there is dodging in the game. So if I dodge right now, you'll see like on the bottom right hand corner of my screen, you'll see that kind of dodge indicator. Showing that I have three dodges, so I can dodge once, dodge twice, dodge three times. So it's double tap, double tap to dodge, and they re, their endurance will refill over time. Uh, dodging in this game is not um, like an invincible mode, right? Like you can't dodge and become invincible. When you dodge, you're only you only dodge skilled attacks. You can't dodge auto attack, right? So the general cleave that is done by uh, the uh, enemy, whether it's AI or in PvP, you cannot dodge that. You won't be invulnerable to that. But if you see a tell, like if you see them uh, gearing up for a massive attack, then yes, you can dodge those. Um, as for the skills, um, you see on the bottom of my screen, like right now I'm not like, you know, out in the open world, so I can't use my auto attack. But the skill bar is down there. You got your health bar underneath that. It's kind of like your energy mana bar as well. Um, on your bottom left hand corner of your screen, you'll see uh, different indicators. Um, you'll see, you know, your class symbol, your prestige in the bottom left hand corner, but also that that's where the chat box is. The bottom right hand corner of your screen, you have your um, mini map and your credits, which is essentially the in game currency. Top right hand corner of the screen is where it shows um, that this is a, in fact a beta test. And also um, different stories that you're doing. So the different quests you have in the game. So you have main story quests, which is um, highlighted in white. And then side story missions were highlighted in different colors, right? And so the more main side stories are essentially in an orange gold color. And the secondary uh, side quests are in more of a yellow color, right? And you can see that as you know, um, on your 
mini map as well. Like you'll see my guy, the little red uh, icon is me and where I'm, you know, where my mouse is pointing. And then the yellow icon shows like where I have to go for the yellow story quest. And then the white icon is what I have to do for the white story quest. So I can just mouse over it and see how far away it is and what it's labeled and whatnot. On the top left hand corner of the screen, you'll see I, K, M, Y, N, and L. So this is essentially your um, user interface. To uh, A general way to access this is by hit, hitting escape. And it'll take you to your... Um, kind of your settings, but you can also hit the letters as well, and you can just scroll through the letters and uh, look through that as well. So I'll go through those like one by one. So I'll first go through my character. So this is my basic character selection right here. On the left-hand side, you'll see, you know, the different classes I have unlocked, which is the three bases, base, basic classes that you can unlock. There are 10 other classes you can unlock on top of that but I haven't played this game long enough to actually unlock the other classes. Um, right here you have your talents. As you play through the story and as you play um, through the actual skill tree, which I'll show you, the, uh, the atlas I'll show you later, um, you can unlock these different uh, talents. And equipping these talents is not like a uh, moderate boost to your um, stats. These are pretty big boosts to your stats. And so you can switch them in and out. Right now, this is not the final number of talents that you can have in a class for specifically the Paladin, but they said that they might add some more. So when you unlock all of the available slots, as you see here, um, you can you know swap in and out of these other ty types of talents. And each talent um, has, you know, like extreme effects, right? And then on here on combos and abilities, this is where the game kind of gets more complicated. So the uh, melee classes are based on combo attacks, right? So right here it says right uh, left mouse button is your essentially your auto attack, your first attack in basic combo. But if you follow that right click, I mean that left click with a right click, then you'll do a combo attack. But if you do a right click, a right, um, sorry, I keep missing left and right. So if you do left click, left click, and then right click, then that's a different combo. Then left click, left click, left click, left click, a different combo. So you can see that, you know, you can actually switch up your attacks as you're going through. And you'll see the different uh, abilities that you can actually do based on the combos that you can actually pull off. And then you can just press and hold your uh, right click and do a different kind of um, skill. So if you see on the left click, you'll see that it says uh, instant. You just have to essentially click it once and it'll be instant. And then when you, there's also charging skills that you can also do. And the longer you charge them, the more damage they can do. Then you have the other skills on your skill bar. And these skills can be swapped out later on. Um, Right now, these are the ones I have unlocked so far. These are not all the ones you can unlock. There are a lot more out there, but I just haven't gone around to unlocking all of them. But you can swap these skills in and out of your skill bar down here. Now, you can change the um, the key binds for this. I have set it to default right now, but you can change the key binds to it. And in the future, I will change the key binds to my Razor Naga. But right now, this is the basic settings I have, and I find this to uh, this is very natural actually, in terms of gameplay. Everything's very accessible, just using this one my my left hand, the WASD, but then also using the skills. It's very very accessible to me. And this is more of an in-depth view of um, essentially your skills, and this is where you can actually swap out your skills, right? So this is just a list of all your uh, of all your combos and abilities that you've unlocked so far. And this is where you can swap it out over here. Um, right here you can see you can just filter through the combo attacks, large area effect attacks, passive, self, single target, and then small area. You can um, change um, your abilities at any given time, right? You just go down here, click reset, and it'll change everything like uh, back to scratch, and then you can um, alter it again. There's a small in-game fee for that. It's like 2,000 credits, I believe, that you can just, you know, reset it, 
and then save it later, right? Uh, 2,000 credits is actually not that much. Um, right now I have like 2,800, but it's because I just kind of just spent it all doing uh, random upgrades. This is a beta, so I'm just testing out a lot of different things. Um, you can also change um, target priority. But um, I haven't really messed around with target priority right now. So when you switch between classes, you can just filter through the classes. You can just switch between classes and you can have... Um, I, I haven't played Lightbringer that much. That's why I have like nothing actually, you know, unlocked here. But, you know, you can switch between classes and alter the skills and abilities for each class. So like Cryomancer right here, you can switch and um, switch things up if, if you want to go. Um, the next tab over is the, the bag. So here is just, you know, regular inventory bag. You can filter it, you know, based on different um, ways. Um, unlocking new slots is in-game credit of, you know, the in-game credits, right? You don't have to actually, you know, purchase, you know, use real money cash to buy upgrades. You can just use in-game currency to um, upgrade your inventory. Here you have your um, equipment. So right now this is beta. Um, they have announced that later stages may be OPA beta or when the game is actually released that they'll have extra equipment available, right? The extra equipment slots because people are complaining that this is not enough, right? Um, there's not a lot of variability in it. So the way Skyforge works is that um, you have your basic rings right? And your rings will have different stats on them, right? Um, and then you have your main hand weapon and then your offhand weapon. But as you notice, there's no armor, right? So the actual part of Skyforge is that there, your armor gives you no stats. Your armor is essentially is just an outfit that you can swap in and out. The reason they're doing this is because they don't want people who are starting into the game to feel like they're a hobo. Right, they're just picking up the best piece of armor they can find on the ground after they kill something and putting it on, even though it doesn't match with anything else. So with the idea of the uh, outfits is that you can essentially just start from scratch and look like a badass from the get-go, right? Then you have these uh, ritual ornaments, right? So this is the unique part of Skyforge that I really like, is that let's say you find um, some rings or some... Um, weapons that you like the stats of those weapons right and then you find something that's more powerful later on but you don't want to switch that other weapon because it doesn't have the same stats that you want right so what you can do basically is click on the ritual ornament or the weapon upgrade and then you can upgrade the weapon that you have right now as opposed to getting uh, replacing it with another weapon that you found so you can use these enhancement stones and the enhancement stones you can use to upgrade your uh, current set to a higher level. And as you upgrade it, you gain more prestige. So as you upgrade it, like you'll go like you know 33%, 66%, 99%, and then you unlock to the next level. And then you start upgrading again, unlock to the next level, upgrade again, unlock to the next level, and keep doing that over and over. This costs um, enhancement stones, but also credits at the same time. And that's the reason why I have lo uh, such little credits, because Eidos is upgrading everything. Um, if you were to switch between classes, right? The thing is, your rings stay the same, right? As you see here, my rings stay the same when I switch to Cryomancer, but my weapons change, right? So uh, between classes, the rings are account bound, but the weapons are character bound. So if you find uh, rings that you like for all your classes, you can keep it from all your classes. But if you like rings for a specific class, right, then you can keep them for a specific class and just swap them out as you go along, right? So when you're when you actually go through a class and you're leveling up a class and you want to switch to another class. You don't have to start from scratch, you know. You have these other trinkets that um, that you've collected, and it'll, it'll swap over to next class. Over here on the right, you have the different stats. Now, you got, like, Might, Base Damage, Stamina, Maximum Health, Strength, m Minimum Damage, and so on. So, these are, the, these are, like, essentially the most basic things. And so, when you first start playing the game... Um, the basic things are the ones that are upgraded the most, 
right? So you go through here, you just upgrading the most basic things, kind of give you an idea, a concept, a feel of how the game actually flows. And then you get these actual uh, number crunching as you move down here. So this is where it actually gets very, very detailed. So those people who love to number crunch will be very, very satisfied with this because there's a lot of different things you can actually um, pull off in this game. Now, there is an article on Skyforge.com that, you know, kind of, they kind of do explain um, all these different features that they have uh, in a much better way. Um, I'm not really in depth with any of these, like, uh, more detailed things. I haven't played the game long enough to actually get into the in-depth things, but there is an article on Skyforge that you can look up. And if you want to learn about each thing specifically and how they upgraded, then yeah, you can read the article over there. Um, next is your style room. So in the style room, like I said, there's no armor in the game. There's just outfits, right? So you can swap between the outfits on the fly. You know, you don't have to, you know, you can, these are the, some, the basic ones, you know, um, and then you can just swap between the outfits as you're going through them. And so, um, you can actually buy more outfits later on if you want to or whatever. But right now, this is the ones are the basic ones that this, you know, comes, uh, comes out with the game. Um, next is currency. So there's a lot of different kinds of currency in Skyforge. And the game does something that I really like, like to see is that you have a limit about how many currencies you can actually obtain. This will prevent, you know, from people from farming the game too much or like, you know, farm bots out there. So these, this limit right here, right? Once you reach that limit, you will, you'll stop getting certain kinds of um, currency which will prevent people from over farming things or like flooding the market with certain things. That is a good way for Skyforge to actually maintain, kind of have a uh, supervision over the market. So that's like your credit limit. Um, sparks of insight. So your sparks are what you're used to, um, you know, go through your atlas, which I'll go through in a bit. And then your class sparks. You have uh, sparks specific to each class. So you have your money. So you have your in-game money, which is your credits. But then these Argents are something that is not available in closed beta right now. But in future releases, this is basically kind of like the Guild Wars 2 version of gems. Where you can either farm in-game credit in exchange for gems to buy stuff on the market. Or you can use real-world money to buy gems to either get more credit or buy stuff on the market. Right? Just like how Guild Wars 2 does it. This is to, like, you know, it's for a competition against the gold farmers out there. And with combination with the actual credit limits, Skyforge will have a very, very good control over gold farming. So in your Ascension uh, Atlas, you actually use um, several different currencies. Sparks of Balance, Sparks of Creation, and Sparks of Destruction. Um, spark replicators increase the amount of sparks you actually obtain from go uh, from actually completing quest, right? So it's a good thing to have this constantly active as you're going through, so it's easier for you to move through the atlas. Then you have your class spark. So each class will have its own uh, specific spark that you can use to mitigate uh, the purchase of certain skills. But also, when you're unlocking talents, you will need these to unlock talents for your specific class, right? So, when you're going through, you can see, like, you know, which classes I've not played at all, as opposed to the classes that I've actually played a lot. So, right now, I've played um, Paladin the most. Um, all these other ones that have zero on it, I haven't really unlocked anything for those classes yet. I spent most of my time just playing the Paladin to get a, but, you know, understanding of... A good understanding of one class as opposed to like a modern understanding of several classes. Um, but I do have a basic understanding of the beginner three classes. Now, I'm not reading through what each credit currency is. I mean, you can pause the video and read it yourself. But it's just it's the same thing for each uh, class. Then you have your order, which I'll go through later on. But through your order, you can get your gifts, right? Uh, which will turn your adepts into missionaries or, you know, kind of uh, gain reputation. 
and then you have your followers. So the more follow, like the more prestige you have, the more followers you have, the more followers you have, and the more prestige you have. And when you send your adepts off into missions, you get more and more followers, right? And the whole point of Skyforge is that you're an immortal and you want to become a god. And when you become a god, you want a huge following, right? So you want to do anything you can for your followers, help them out as much as you can. Then you have your rare currencies. These rare currencies, you know, they're found in open world areas at random places, right? You can literally like mine this stuff. Um, there's no actual like mining in the game. Like you don't you don't go out to like a, get like you know chop down trees for wood or find iron ore to mine or whatever. What you do is you find these r rare currencies that you can actually like um, mine, right? They're not your typical things that you actually pick up. And other MMOs, but you can use this stuff to uh, buy different things in the market. And then you have your others. This is used to actually upgrade your uh, equipment. And then your celestial threads are what you're used to buy um, costumes with, right? Your different outfits. And the last thing in character is progress. So this right here shows my progression through the game, right? where I am in the story, the equipment that I have, some of the stats that I have here, um, and then like the amount of upgrades I have done for each of my, you know, uh, pieces of equipment. So like, you know, my, this is my, you know, uh, offhand upgrades. This is my main hand upgrade. So like I've upgraded my main hand from rank three out of 20 ranks in total, right? Same with my, um, Trinkets, rank 3 out of 20, offhand 2 out of 20, and then my stats that I'm getting off of that. Then my class development. So, like I said, I haven't played this game a lot. So, my class development is only 3.5%, right? So, there's a lot more that you can do. And when I say I haven't done a lot in this game, I've actually played this game for a good 20 hours or something from this closed beta and also the previous closed beta. So in 20 hours, I've only clocked, uh, unlocked 3.5% of one class out of the 13 classes. So that's the thing is that um, Skyforge is fully aware of how difficult it is to progress. And they said that when the game is actually released, that they will um, do a better job of reevaluating the progression to ensure that it, it doesn't come off as too grindy. Because right now in closed beta, it is a bit grindy. Um, Next is your Ascension Atlas. So this is one um, line of the Ascension Atlas, right? This is just for the cry the Cryomancer, right? So this is the Cryomancer basic. Um, so when you first are going through it, it's a singular line, kind of get, get you an idea of what the upgrades will do. And as you progress through it, it'll start to branch off. And you can get, you know, start doing some variation, very, very minimal variation at this point, you know, a single branch off and then another branch off. And then finally, when you get to your end, you've essentially, that's, that's when you actually um, unlock your elite skill. When you unlock your elite skill, what will happen is that you'll have access to the other parts of the Ascension Atlas. So with the three basic classes, you have three basic Ascension Atlas um progression so the paladin i've unlocked the most as you can see this gold line right here as i've unlocked it the most but i still haven't got enough to actually you know unlock the my elite skill right so i still have a lot more work to do so this is a um, scaled out view if you zoom in you'll see like you know this is my paladin and then as you're going through the game you can start unlocking things you, you'll be using the uh, In-game currency of the sparks will unlock these different nodes. So each spark will have a different buff that will give to your stats. And then also in the center of these circles, it will either unlock a different talent or a different skill for your class. So as you're going through it and you're uh, getting more and more unlocked, you'll get more skills unlocked and more talents unlocked. Um, so right down here, You'll see Sparks of Injustice, which is my class-specific spark. Uh, sparks of Destruction, Sparks of Creation, and Sparks of Balance. You get these from doing um, different adventures, which I'll cover in a bit. 
So right now, this is a very, very simple um, overview of the Ascension Atlas. And this is actually not that complicated right now. But the thing is, is that by the time you actually finish um, one of the three beginning classes, you'll unlock the uh, real Ascension Atlas, right? This is only a microscopic view. So this is a light binder right here. And honestly, this is the like one thirteenth the size of the actual atlas, right? Because you have thirteen different classes, um, 